Hurricane Melissa becomes one of the strongest Category 5 storms ever to form in the Atlantic Basin, and it continues to strengthen. Winds are up to an astonishing 175 miles per hour sustained, with gusts nearing 200 miles per hour. The pressure is down to 906 millibars. Some models even take this down below 900 millibars. If that happens, it will be in rarefied air indeed. This is a Pacific type in the Atlantic Basin. It's currently moving over an eddy that contains some of the warmest water in the Caribbean, so further strengthening is likely indeed occurring and no sign of an eyewall replacement cycle to end the strengthening every time, anytime soon. It has begun its northward turn toward Jamaica. You can see that right here on this satellite image. This is the water vapor loop and you can see the yellow and orange in this eye. It has become, it has set the world record for the driest eye ever with a temperature of minus 4.75 degrees Celsius. That is a world record, folks, and it is now turning northward toward Jamaica within the last hour and a half or so it has begun this turn. A serious, serious, catastrophic situation is shaping up for Jamaica. I've got the latest model data. We're going to take a look at the impacts and uh, show you everything there is to show you about this hurricane. Hurricane hunters are continuing to fly around in the system, dropping drop signs, taking measurements at flight level. They even had to turn back earlier because they were concerned about the severe turbulence impacting the safety of the flight crew with the airframe potentially becoming compromised in these extreme, extreme forces within this eye wall, folks. You can see this is the more traditional view. Purples and even whites showing up minus 80 to minus 90 degrees Celsius. This is unprecedented. A perfectly symmetrical eye wall, perfectly symmetrical eye itself. And it is incredibly, incredibly impressive on satellite. If we take a look here at this particular image, if I get, get us on the right display, this is the uh, visible image. And you can sort of see that stadium club effect in the eye. If you look close enough, that is only visible with some of the strongest hurricanes. There are metavortices uh, working within this. So mesoscale vortex, vortexes within this eye. And you can kind of see those. If we could zoom in here, I would show it to you, but I can't zoom on this view. In any event, folks, this is an impressive storm. This is the latest HMON. We looked at this earlier today. It now takes the storm beneath the 900 millibar threshold. It is 902, three hours from now. We go on out toward this afternoon and into the evening hours tonight. Look at this. By uh, 5 p.m. East Coast time, we're at 8 um, 897 millibars, folks. That is just incredible. It jump, bounces around a little bit. And as we go through the evening hours tonight, we wake up tomorrow morning at 8 a.m. East Coast time. This is going to be, of course, a little, uh, little later out there in Atlantic time. But look at this. This is approaching Jamaica the other day. It looked like it was going to impact you all in the night. Now it's coming ashore in the daytime, but plenty of rain and plenty of wind will precede the eye wall. And remember, folks, the eye itself is about 10 miles or so in diameter. So this, this, this can fluctuate a little bit, but either way, the uh, impacts of the storm are going to be catastrophic for this, at least the western half of Jamaica, if not all of the island itself. You guys on the east will not experience the strongest wind as the eye wall here uh, will, the folks in the eye wall experience, and models are not 100% exact on the pinpoint of the dead center of the storm, but folks, it doesn't matter. It's going to be very windy, and up in the mountains, it's going to be even windier than it is near the coastline. So by the time we get on in toward 10 o'clock in the morning, we're looking at uh, the storm making landfall. Again, I'm, I'm giving you East Coast time so you can translate that to your local time zone. Uh, and then it exits tomorrow afternoon. The southern eye wall continues to pound Jamaica and then it makes its way up toward Cuba as we reach the evening hours tomorrow evening about 10 o'clock or so in the evening is when it will experience you, you guys will start to see um, this thing move ashore the eye wall will perceive that the northern eye wall will and you'll see a ton of rain and a ton of wind it makes landfall in cuba as a category four or three storm and then it exits that gets into the bahamas the turks and caicos in the eastern bahamas are going to be 
under the gun by the time we get into Wednesday morning, and then Wednesday afternoon it moves through the island. We get into Thursday evening, it's pulling away, still going to have some rain bands and some feeder bands, and then it moves on out into the Atlantic, and Bermuda is next. This is the HF, uh, HF here, and um, this is the B version of this particular hurricane model, and you can see it brings it all the way down to 892 millibars. This is just incredible to get down that low, and it brings it on up in toward Jamaica. By the time we get into um, the overnight, uh, pre-dawn hours, we're seeing the eye walls start to approach shore. Some of these outer bands are already working in with strong winds, hurricane force wind gusts, and heavy, heavy rain. And the eye wall comes ashore eight o'clock or so east coast time uh, here on the southern uh, and western end of Jamaica. It begins to push in at 901 millibars, folks. That is just ear popping. And um, it exits the coast in the next three or four hours. And then it pushes on out into the open waters of the Caribbean. And then the eye wall begins to push ashore by the time we get on into about 10 o'clock tomorrow night. So the models are very much aligned now on where it's going and what the timing looks like. By 8 a.m. Wednesday, it's off the coast of Cuba, headed into the Bahamas and the Turks and Caicos, and you're going to feel that by the time you get on in toward Wednesday afternoon and into the evening hours. And then beyond that, we get on out here toward Thursday and uh, in toward Friday in Bermuda. You are in the crosshairs there. We'll take a better look at that on a zoomed out view in a minute. Here's a map of Jamaica for some of you that may not be familiar with Jamaica. I've had to learn some of this myself, but it looks like the eye is going to come ashore somewhere between Black River and uh, Falmouth and then over here toward Point Kaiser and uh, up to Runaway Bay, somewhere in that region there. The northern eye wall will precede the eye itself, of course, and then you'll get pounded on the back end as well. And folks here on either side of these yellow lines will remain in horrendous conditions throughout. Now this can shift a little bit, so don't take this as the final word as the storm is now beginning its turn, but folks, western Jamaica is going to get hammered. And the other thing that we need to pay attention to here as well, there's going to be quite a bit of surge coming in from the south as this thing moves in. So that's something to pay attention to. But we've got mountains here, and the highest mountains are over here, way over in the east, between four and 5,000 feet up. And then we've got mountains here between, say, you know, one and uh, 2,000 feet and some of these areas here in the central portion of Jamaica, folks. And what happens is as air rides up those mountains, it rings every bit of moisture out at can. And so you're going to see torrential rainfall rates in these mountains and, of course, in these mountains over to the west or the east, rather, as well. The storm system bringing all of that moisture in is going to lead to horrific flash flooding, mudslides, and the wind element, the wind aspect, as you get higher off the surface, we're going to see winds in the mountains be around 200 miles per hour in terms of gusts with this thing, folks. If you were familiar with anything that happened in Helene, that was a Category 1 storm that hit the southeast, and there were tremendous areas of the forest that were just laid over, mudslides, landslides, creeks changing the riverbeds, uh, riv river flooding that changed the formation of the riverbed permanently. You're going to see a lot of catastrophic flooding and uh, wind damage as a result of this, especially up in the higher terrain. So if you if you live up there, I would get down and get to the safest place you can get to, folks. It's going to be a complete disaster. Here's uh, the wind gusts map as we roll this forward. Look for the highest winds to start coming in uh, sometime overnight tonight, maybe around um, midnight or so, and then just extending further from there to the north. The folks on the western end of the island are going to have the worst experience, the worst winds. These grays are 150 mile per hour wind gusts. And you're going to see quite a few of those gusts the sustained winds are probably only in small sections of the eye wall, but you're going to see gusts well over 140 miles per hour up into the 160s or 70s, possibly even higher than that as you go up in terms of terrain. And then it will move across the island and exit by about 12 p.m., 1 p.m. East Coast tomorrow, and then approach Cuba in a diminished state, but still very, very formidable. We're seeing wind gusts here even remaining in the 120 mile per hour uh, gust 
category or zone as it moves across Cuba tomorrow evening into the uh, into the overnight hours, into the nighttime hours, folks, and then it exits and heads into the Bahamas, going to be diminished from there, but we're still going to see plenty of uh, gusts surrounding this as well into the you know, 120s, into the, maybe the 130s, uh, if it gains any strength back when it gets out here in the warm waters, but it's going to have its core disrupted significantly by some of the terrain that we're going to see. Rainfall, we're looking at plenty of rain, and uh, immeasurable rain, really 20 to 30 inches for much of Jamaica, as much as 20 inches up here in parts of eastern Cuba, and 16, 12, you know, a foot of rain here, anywhere between um, 8 to as much as uh, 16, 18 inches of rain here in the Tiburon Peninsula here in Haiti. So a lot of adverse conditions to be expected here. Power is going to be out for a long time, and communities are going to be cut off and isolated, and this is one of uh, going to be one of the um, most prominent humanitarian crises that we've seen in a long time from a natural disaster. This is going to be really, really, really bad for a lot of people. I doubt power will be back anytime soon. We're going to see a lot of in infrastructure damage as well. There's the official forecast track. It is a major hurricane and it will remain so until it crosses Cuba and then it should weaken back to a category two and uh, continue to weaken from there. Bermuda, you're directly in the path and expect uh, and prepare for category two storm conditions. However, it likely will be in a weakening state as it gets up there, may even lose some of its tropical characteristics as it heads on toward and beyond Bermuda. It eventually will lose its tropical characteristics. And there it is, folks. Here is the uh, Zoom Earth. We're looking at 165 miles per hour, 8 p.m. tonight. 160 mile per hour uh, sustained winds by 8 a.m. tomorrow, and then it begins to weaken after Jamaica. Hurricane warnings are up for Jamaica. Hurricane warnings are up for Cuba. Hurricane watches are up for the Turks and Caicos in the eastern Bahamas. Tropical storm warnings are in place for e, uh, west of the hurricane warnings here in Cuba and also in Haiti uh, as well. And so we will see this make it on into these, these areas and uh, be exiting the Bahamas by the time we get into Wednesday afternoon and then heading on up toward Bermuda. I'm going to put this, I'm just going to crawl this up the screen and we'll get up here eventually, but there is Bermuda right there. Look at this, this track, the official track takes the eye to the to the uh, west of Bermuda, which could be bad. So we're going to watch this as we go out over the next couple of days. But folks, there is a lot of things going on right now in the more immediate term, and that is Jamaica, folks living there, get into your safe place immediately. Cuba, you've got to get ready. This is going to be on your doorstep in 24 hours. Bahamas, Turks and Caicos, beyond that, and then up into uh, Bermuda after that. So a lot to prepare for. It is still strengthening. I'll keep you updated here and on uh, X as well. Follow me there at Real Cold Rain. Stay safe, everybody, and uh, pray for our friends in Jamaica and Cuba and in the Caribbean. God bless.